exciting time, exciting period to be alive, to be a viewer of the Standpoint, to be a member of the Standpoint family. Yes, we are 13 years and it's so exciting. Thus far by the grace of God. Listen, throughout this month and months to come, you know, we've already started July, you know, months to come. We are going to bring you feedback. Do I say feedback? Okay, throwback experiences. Those who have been on the program before, those who are yet to come, those who watch it, and find out how the standpoint has impacted their lives. You know, we started with Mary and, you know, the others as well. So it's going to be a homecoming sort of uh, month for me and for the standpoint. I don't know why I'm so excited about this month, this anniversary particularly 13 years. I don't know why, but I'm really, really excited about it. Maybe because by the grace of God, despite the COVID period, we didn't fold up. The program didn't come to an end and we are still going strong. It's simply by the grace of God. Anyway, today I do have a program for you. I have three young, crazy men. In fact, three crazy young men. Let me put it that way. Three crazy young men. Young. All of them are under 30 years and it's amazing what they're doing. So determined to make sure that they change this narrative, this status quo, the perception and impression we've had about young men for years. They are doing something different. And I'm excited to have them on the show, all of them first time being on the show. But I do have a story about each and every one of them and the role they've played in my life. And maybe they will share the role that I've played in their lives as well. But we do have a program for you today. Let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress is by... Ophelia Crossland. Thank you so much to her. My wig is by Inshallah G8. Make her face beat by Michelin's Mirror. Follow them on Instagram, on Facebook, and all other platforms. And then make her products by Nut Cosmetics. The one and only. Light on the face. All shades. Their lipstick, their shadows, their pencils. I mean, they've got it all. The range. And when you go, and it's affordable. That's one thing. Affordable too. And you still look good. Well, we take a break when we come back. I introduce to you the three crazy young men who are doing great things in this country called Ghana. And oh, they all have a feminine side. The standpoint still listen to the feminine side. We'll be back. Well, welcome back to The Standpoint. If you missed the intro, today my guests are three crazy young men who are doing great stuff. All of them really young and we're going to have an interesting conversation. And trust me, um, by the end of it, I'm sure I'll be educated and motivated and inspired to even do greater things. Yeah, one of them is looking at the other thinking, wondering, hey, what is this woman getting us into <laughs> today? Well, let me say thank you to our sponsors. That's GTP, still timeless. GTP is on, an, on a campaign to make sure that you get the Oga, original, genuine, and authentic GTP fabric, wherever you find yourself. You make sure that you get that one. Let's contribute. Let's Let's promote our own and support our own. Thank you to Esteron Balloons and Accessories. Everything Balloons and Accessories. Just get in touch with them. And wherever you are, they will sort you out. We are also grateful to Not Cosmetics and, of course, a Life a Boy. On my set today, right opposite me is Mr. Terry Monte. He's the CEO of the Accra Hub. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you. Jeff. How do you find uh, my set? How do I find my set? Yeah, it's nice. It's, you it's, like it? Yeah, I like Good. it. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And next to him is uh, my son, one of my troubles from Edumasa, my husband's PA. Let me just get in there. And, but he takes me do nothing. <laughs> He's a Steven Nana Eshwin. He's the CEO of Mantra Group. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you very much. I can't believe that after all these years, this is the first time you are coming on the standpoint. You know, 
that's 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 one of the things. Yes, so when people are close sure. to you, you take to th you, you tend to take things for granted. Yeah. But good to have you on the standpoint. Oh, thank you very much. And next to him is my other trouble. Yeah, just last week he was here telling me that I'm delaying. I should come up with another book. Me feel crap. <laughs> He's Jeremiah Boabeng. He's the CEO of Boabeng Communications and Boabeng Books Limited. Welcome to the standpoint. Thank you, mommy. It's good to be here. So, so far, how many books have you published? Oh, do I even know the number? <laughs> I I will struggle to tell, but I can tell that in a year we do about thirty to forty books a year. New so, books. Yes, new books, new books a year. So. In the six year history of the business, of course, the numbers have increased over time. But we can see we've done about some 200 books. 200 so far. books, yeah. wow. Well done. So well, thank you. Group of companies. That's very impressive, yeah. How many groups? Um, we well, have six. Six of them. I have um, Mantra Korea, okay. and then I have the Mantra Driving School. Okay. I have the uh, Mantra Auto Ghana. Okay. Then I have the Mantra Security, and then I have the Mantra Microcredit. How old are you? Um, let's keep that for all. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 51 going on 52. All right. How old are you? Okay, I'll be 40. 40 this August. Whoa. Yeah, I wanted it to August. be a surprise, yeah. But anyway, you are my mom, so. Small boys are young. You never know. And you already have six. <laughs> yeah, sure. Six. What's your problem? Why are you a restless soul? <laughs> you can you say can't that. You can one thing at a time. <laughs> it's just the passion for business, you know. Just the passion to do business and to succeed. Do you have a business? Do you, are you coming from a family of business people? Um, no. I think I'm the only person who loves business. So you, know, you broke the stereotype, exactly. the, the, the status quo? The status quo, sure. Exactly. Terry. Hi. What do you do apart from writing books? I do <laughs> consulting. So I have a background in market research and business development. So that okay. is what I use to consult for, for businesses. Okay. So, so that is what has even led me to start the Accra Hub. I was going to ask, what, what is the Accra Hub? The Accra so the Accra Hub is an innovation and incubation center, and we exist to build capacity and also to provide support services for entrepreneurs, startups, and SMEs to be able to thrive and do well. So we have uh, all kinds of things, brand identity services, co-working spaces, places where People can just come and sit and get their work done. When they need to meet a client, they can come there and have their meetings. And various business incubation programs, programs that advance the sustainable development goals, vocational education training, and then other... Why is that crap? Is that also? How was it like growing up? What kind of father did you have? Well, um, I grew up in a, modest, in a modest home. My dad was a plumber. My mom was a trader. Um, initially, Ad Ad I mean, honestly, my dad was great. We, we, we went to a school that was right in our community, and he was a plumber who was trying to make ends meet for his family. But he was determined to give his children the best of education. So, right from the community school that we attended, when you finished class six, going into GSS, then he jumps into a very good school. So, my elder brother got to class six, then my father said, No, I want my children to go to a good school. So, he would take us to Datus. At that time, that was in Kaswa, away in that block factory. So we go to that was by, by bus. And then I got to class six. I also was jumped from the community school. And then I went to that was. So my, my dad was determined to give his children a really good education. And then, I mean, getting good clothes was like a normal for us. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, along the line, things didn't go so well. So that influence in our lives began to wane. Fortunately for us, what we didn't get from him in material resource, we got from him in genes. So all of us kids were very determined, resolute young people. So as I speak now, we are six in the family, and five of us who are old, uh, who are old enough to work all have our own businesses. The sixth person, the only reason he doesn't have a business is because he's in secondary school from two. So if, if at any point he lost his influence, we still carried his confidence, we're bold enough to start businesses. I mean, after I started business and some had gone into my eye, I told the one behind him that tell you don't start a business. I'm going to look for a job. He didn't listen to me. He started a business, and his business is now three years old. He's doing jobs for people all over the country and stuff like that. Wow! wow. So the plumber's son dared to dream to have his own business, yeah. and all of you, five of you, all of you have your all of own us are business. Entrepreneurs. Yeah. 
of all entrepreneurs. Yes. Are you the first born? I'm the second born. You are the second born. Yes. The first one has his own so business. In our, our, our eldest brother is, is Ricky. Ricky owns Platinum Cinematics, so he's into video production, photography, and then there's me who runs a couple of businesses, and then I do some stuff, consulting work as well. The one behind me is, uh, is into tech, so it's into things related to new, new media, uh, motion graphics, websites, apps. Mm. The one behind him is a graphic designer and a pastor. So he runs his own advertising agency and he has started a church as well. Then the one behind him is a girl. She's a fashion designer. And she has a very you, interesting... You know, you know what is surprising? Because you are, th you are second one, you are 33. So <laughs> I'm just imagining... Is, they are just young, young, young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> My sister is just 22 years old and her, her story is amazing. She went to school to do an HND in fashion. Right after her first semester, COVID hit. So school came to a halt. But she was determined to make a fashion designer for herself. She started watching videos on YouTube, going to do small, small things with fashion designs and all of that. So now, my sister now sews clothes for people for money. And she's actually now learning how to do bridals. I've seen some of her works, you know, amazing, yeah. amazing designs here. Yeah. yeah. Why hasn't she sold for people for money? On do level yet. On do level yet. Who said so to level yet? On do level that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But what, what, what was your dream growing up? What did you want to do? Well, um, a couple of things ran through my mind when I was growing up. Uh, but it, it began to consolidate when I was around 14, 15. So when I was, I, I, used, I used to love reading. I mean, I've always been a reader. So around the, my mid-teens, I started getting attracted to things of a philosophical, inspirational, such as nature. So around 15, 16, I discovered a passion for sharing wisdom, inspiring people, motivating people. So throughout my whole stay in secondary school, I spent a bit of my time doing that. And then, and then so in that period, I got introduced to a couple of authors. One of them was Yaupebi, Dr. Yaupebi, who is now based in Canada. And then the other was Stephen R. Covey. And Stephen R. Covey's books made me excited about management, organizational leadership and stuff like that. So even then, I started thinking of owning my own, own business. business. Okay. I remember back in secondary school, one of my friends offended me. And I told him that he's offending me now because he thinks I'm nobody. But along the line, he will have to book an appointment to meet me in my office. That's why he laughed. Because, yes, yeah, he laughed. Because I was so sure that I was going to come out of school and become an entrepreneur. And now, now I see some of my friends and they say, Jeremiah, the thing you said is you do amo. <laughs> So, so after school, did you ever work for somebody before so working for yourself? My only experience, my only work experience in life is the teaching I did post secondary school. Okay. But post secondary, so but besides that, after national service, I've never worked a day for anybody. I, I after national service, I began a full time career as a motivational speaker. Did that for about a year and a half. Then I started thinking of what I could do that with the rest of my time I had mm. if I wasn't speaking at conferences. So I started thinking, and then I started what became Bobbin Books and then Bobbin Communications and. Mm a few other things that I've done in that period. Amazing. Wow. Wow. Let me take a break. Um, when we come back, we'll go to uh, Stephen and then Terry. Amazing. And I mean, right from the beginning, you get it. It doesn't matter where you start. Be determined and you can be consistent. You can hold on to your dream. And I must add this. He was the first person I, I heard him make that statement that before you get to heaven, you need to, uh, you need to know Jesus. And then I also added my part to oh, Jesus also has to so, know you. So you really remember that encounter? I do, yes. Wow. I do. You thought what? <laughs> this is about I, five or six years ago. Yes. At, 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 the, at Natal. Wow. I remember. Yes. That's I interesting. Do remember. I never forget. That, that's me. Somebody, uh, they will tell you. His, his, his boss will tell you that this woman, remember every date. Wow. <laughs> every day, I never forget. I was, you do me good or bad, I remember. Wow. I decide to forgive, but I remember. <laughs> well, you're we watching the standpoint. Let me say thank you to all our supporters. Go, go, to, you got. I mean, you got it very good for you. And so, and you know, the guys who well, I'll get them on the standpoint one of these days too, because they also from tech decided producing mm -hmm. their own yogurt and they're doing so well. Now people beat me and tell me that they can't get some to sell at their shop. They've come on top. Hey, Lloyd, hey, eh? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Thank you to Awake Purified Mineral Water and Puma Drinks by Casa Preco Company Limited. Cake Technique. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. 
house of food, antivera, codams, gift and stationery, everything, gift and stationery, get there, they will sort you out. You have cleaning services, whatever the occasion, just get in touch with them and they will do the fumigate as well. Your office, your home, your, your um, events, cleaning before and after, they will do all that for you. Thank you to Juice Time. We are so grateful to everybody. And of course, Life Boy and GTP for supporting our programs for June and July. We'll be back. Welcome back to the standpoint. Well, again, I say thank you to GTP for my uh, cloth. My dress is by Ophelia Crossland, makeup by Mitchell's Mirror, and then makeup products, Note Cosmetics, my hair by Inshilo GH. You can follow all of them on Instagram and on Facebook as well. And I'll say thank you to all our supporters and sponsors. Thank you to Life Boy and Note Cosmetics for always giving me stuff, gifts for my guests on the show. Now, seated right opposite me is Terry Manti. Next to him is Stephen Nana Ishrain and then Jeremiah Boabing. Let me move on straight to Terry. What kind of background do you have growing up for you? I think this is probably the first time I'm going to talk about something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So it's normal, typical Ghanaian family, but I didn't grow up in a home where both mother and father were present. Okay. It was primarily a single parent family. My mom did a lot of the work. My father didn't really do much of the work. So we just grew up like that, went through the normal government school system, and then secondary school, university, and here I am. How many, how many are you in the family? We are four. Four. So I'm the third. So third. I have an elder brother, I have okay. a sister, and then myself and another brother. Another brother. Yes. Okay, so your mother single-handedly raised you. Yes. What was she doing? What... My, mom, my mom worked as a caterer. So she started as a domestic bezer in a secondary school, what we normally would call a matron. A matron, So she yeah. was a matron. And so she worked in, um, well, at the time, she worked in, in Akimoda, Oda Secondary School, which is now Oda Secondary School. It's Achimoda. It's Achimoda, not, not Akim. Not Akim. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Achimoda. So that was where I actually I had my primary education. Okay. And then along the line, she left the country. So she moved on to live in the United States. Okay. So we transitioned from there to live with another auntie, auntie okay. of ours in Koforidia, who okay. was also, well, I, I, we normally would say she's an auntie, but at the time she was just my mother's my mother. friend. Yeah. She was my mother's friend. Friend, okay. But we so not blood related? Not blood yeah. related. Okay. But we went to live with her in Koforidia. She also happened to be another domestic, there's another matron. Ah, okay. So in Koforidia, I lived on the campus of Ghana's for many years. Then I went to... Where did your campus boy you? From Achimda, you know, boy. campus to, you know, Koforidia and campus. Growing up in matron's houses, you can imagine the amount of secondary school food I've eaten. <laughs> I was going to either you, 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 you are the type who you will never complain about secondary school food. <laughs> okay. So... So, they, so that was it. And then okay. so, but even in, in Kufuja, it was a very good life there. Wow. And, and we, then I moved on to secondary school. I went to St. Peter's and then to University of Ghana. And mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, I've, I've been working and hustling. But what was then. your dream? 
<laughs> I wanted to be a doctor at a point. <laughs> But why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> because almost every child, it's something a lot of children talk about. about yeah. Yeah. But you know, when you are, those days, when you are going to school and you seem to be doing well, well academically, exactly. everybody thinks that, ah, you're a, oh dear, sorry, a doctor. Yeah. And, sorry, and I thought it would be a prestigious thing to be a doctor. And then I did very well with BC. Mm. But thankfully, when I went to St. Peter's, I wasn't allowed to do, I couldn't get to do the science. Mm -hmm. Because in that school, when you go, they don't just give you what you want to do. They will assess it, you. It will assess you. And then, thank God, my weaknesses showed in that very first term. Right. Mathematics, mm. science, not very good. Mm. So they didn't allow me to do the science. I had to do general arts, which I think was a blessing. Mm. Because I can't imagine myself now yeah. being in that field. So I did that. And then... So when I couldn't get the science, the dream changed. <laughs> so I used to listen to the news a lot. And then you normally, there was a particular economist in this country, I don't want to mention his name, but any time his name came up in the media, they would say, a respected economist, mm. a respected economist. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I also want to be respected. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what, econ what the economist was. was. Yeah. And at the time, I, one of my elective subjects in secondary school was economics. So yeah. I said, okay, I wanted to be a, so I said, okay, I wanted to be an economist and a lawyer, you know, so, but, but more important, the economist, the because economist. I respected, With the respected. yes, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, then I got to the University of Ghana, and then I saw that the economics I was doing in secondary school was, was very no different <laughs> from the you. economics <laughs> in, at the University of Ghana, so, I, the dream also began to me. So let me just concentrate on becoming mm -hmm. a, a lawyer, which I haven't totally given up on. Mm -hmm. But so I just so I dropped the economics the along year. the line. I finished with political science and sociology. I attempted to go to the law faculty. I didn't pass the entrance exam, and then I so I just went to do an MBA, and then. So Terry, Terry has failed before. Several times. Oh, okay. Failed to get to do science at the secondary school. Failed. Okay, that one I won't say failed. But the first attempt at getting into the law faculty didn't really work out. Mm -hmm. And then other things along the line too may not have worked out. Okay. But we keep so after learning. uni, where did you work? After uni, I got straight into a, the field of market research. It was an incidental situation. But national service took me there. So okay. I worked with a private company that was into market research. At the time, I didn't even know there was a whole industry, industry or field of market research. So I did the market research. And that was when I got to see that when you are running a business or doing something, you can't just sit in your room and say that, oh, I think if I do this, it will work. And then you go and do it. Because sometimes some of our clients would bring some the products they wanted to do. And then we would do a, a research about the product. We have to do, test it on the market. And then you realize that, mm -hmm. no this product would not work. It's a good product, but based on what people are saying about it, it wouldn't work, and all kinds of things. So it really helped me. So in mm. terms of how I even communicate, I don't like to assume a lot. Mm. No matter how logical you, it sounds, it, says, it sounds in my mind, I wouldn't want to put it out there without testing it or without having some practical understanding of how the thing really is on the ground. Mm. Because I saw it so many times. Mm. There was a particular campaign that had done a, pro a product, just when they were about to launch it, somebody said, no, let's test it first. So we tested the product, we did focus group discussions across the country, and today that product never came out. Never came out. Because they complained, packaging, how the product was, and, and all of that, and it never came, and it saved them a lot of money. Right. And all that, so that really, for me, has undergirded much of what I've done since then even as an author, as a consultant, and all of that. So sometimes mm -hmm. people come to me, say, okay, we want to do A, B, C, D. Can you do it for me? I, Will it work? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. No. <laughs> I unless I, unless I, we I, test it, unless right. we research into it. And so how, yeah. how long, um, what, what pushed you to work on your own, to go work on your own? It's something I had, I had always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I, because I felt that I needed the space and the freedom to be able to do things that would enable me to make an impact on society. Because sometimes you had to, there are times you have to, you have to go to work. If you have to, you work it with, uh, we do a regular job. So you go to work 
from eight to five. Sometimes you get home tired and it's difficult to combine with all these other things. So okay. I decided that I was going to develop the discipline to be able to do the things I really, really, really felt strongly about to be able to, no matter how difficult. But of course, I've worked like with, them, this, yeah. with a, a few. But you have no regrets before. leaving to work for yourself. I have no regrets. I have lessons, but no regrets. regrets. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to do it all over again, you do it differently. I would do it differently. Not that I would. I, I may not work for any. Still, not work for anybody. anybody but anybody. I would. I would. I would do it maybe more, much differently. But right. I'm sure that it wouldn't be very different. Right. Right. You know, one of the. Um, reasons I decided to get you young men on the program was um, a young man in um, Tamale that I interviewed first week in June called uh, McCarthy. He's the, the hop-in center in Tamale. Okay. And he made a comment that as a child, he believes in young people starting or people starting while they are young, yes, being and daring, watched, you watch it. And then he gave an example of when a child is playing, doesn't care we're pushing water or whatever, doesn't care what it is. he or she has no sense of fear. Yeah. But yeah. when you grow up to a certain <laughs> stage, then moving out becomes scary. Mm -hmm. You can start asking yourselves. But when you are young, and I believe that that's what you guys did, you yeah. took the, what, the plunge yeah. at very young, and especially this one. How, do you have any things? Uh, you know, so many things uh, at the same time. And um, for me, I think it's it's very um, exemplary for people to know. Yeah. Now, Stephen, you are not just working for yourself, but sure. you are working with your wife. Sure. Yeah. When people are... God forbid, touch wood. Yeah. And this is wood too. Yeah. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Marriages are breaking down because yeah. couples work sure. together. You, as a younger man, yeah. with a young wife, yeah. with kids, how many kids? Three. Three kids. Yeah. You decided that you're going to work with your sure. wife. How many years have you been working together? Um, we've been working together for, I think, about uh, 10 years, if I'm not. Working together yeah. for 10 years? Yeah. It gets into 10 years now. So mm -hmm. I would say probably, effectively, eight years. Yeah. Why did you take that decision? Uh, well, um, was it your decision or the two of you decided? Well, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, I keep telling myself that if I'm not able to convince whoever I'm with to also get that passion to do business, then I've failed. You know, so um, my wife, when uh, I think just after we got married, you know, she was working with one of the telcos. I don't want to mention the yes. name. And, you know, the, the stress. You know, she goes and sometimes comes late. And there was a time that she was attacked when she was coming home. And I felt, okay, this is it. We need to make a decision, you know. So what do you think you can do best aside, you know, what you do at your workplace? So we discussed it. I was able to help her with some business plan. And she decided to work with me because she felt that she has an accounting background. So she felt that she would be able to support me in what I do. You know, so since then, then we took that decision to work together. You know, so she's, I gave her the managerial role, and she's been managing everything that we do since. So we started working together since then, and I can say that it has really helped because uh, bringing up the children, when we started having kids and all that, it gave her the time to be able to properly, you know, manage the kids and all that, and also to manage the home. So for me, it's the best decision. And before we even came on set, I was discussing with my friends, Terry and Jerry, that I think marrying my wife is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, you know, because she compliments me so well. And <laughs> Where did she go you know, to school? Yeah, oh, of course. Moga, uh, uh, Moga, where did Moga, she of go Moga, to Moga, school? Moga, 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 Moga. Where did she Moga go to school? To school? Moga. <laughs> she went to find my girls again. Man, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. She's a good woman. <laughs> you know, so for me, that was when we, I made the decision for her to join me. And it's not something I also forced on her, but I had to be able to, you know, explain to her the benefits. And I think she's also not regretted since. So mm. we've been working you together. Sure you, have you had a conversation with her oh, to yeah. find out if oh, of course. she's of course. glad she took that of decision? Course. Yeah, she's glad. Because one thing I also told her, that she still have a professional 
certificate. And mm. any time she feels there's a need to fall on it, she can always do that, mm. you know. And trust me, we are doing very well. You know, she man handles uh, Mantra Courier. Yeah. And Jerry is one of our biggest clients. And Jerry will tell you. Hey, and you I'm know, your client too. Of course, of course, of course. And, and, and at 32, you know, um, you see. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they will tell you. Uh, I mean, it's a I mean, yeah. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, I, I'm I not can. saying it because it's here. Sometimes yeah, I, say I know. All the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Extremely well run, yeah. extremely polite, yeah. extremely yeah. disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like I'm coming and they are yeah. coming and coming. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. I need this. It's, oh, yeah. we can't do that now. Yeah. Can yeah. we do it at this it's time? time. You know. That, that's that's mm -hmm. something I testify, especially <laughs> when I was doing and uh, when I run promotions and yeah. I have to deliver books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Nam will send me. Yeah. And I said, and um, uh, Barbara will send me a message and yeah. say that, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, can he can't get there at seven? Is it possible to get there at nine? Will yeah. it be okay? You yeah. know, yeah. and at nine nine you'll be there. And yeah. I mean, it's different for people telling you, oh, I'll be there in the morning, and they'll get yeah. and they'll get here and say, oh, I was doing this, I was doing this, I was <laughs> doing that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. So as you guys have testified, I mean, she's doing extremely well. Oh, well yeah. And I also keep that open door kind of, you know, mm -hmm. management so that when she have any challenges, she can come to me mm -hmm. and they'll be able to discuss it. She signs on all the accounts, you know, so she doesn't necessarily have to co-sign with me. Mm -hmm. So that is, the trust is also there. So right. for me, uh, it's a good decision I decided to work with. But what did people tell you when you decided, when they initially found you started working with your Well, wife? you know, they would say, hey, you could work when, when there's a breakup or when there's a divorce, you have issues. And I said, I don't think of divorce. You know, you, when you pick the right woman, it's difficult to think. I'm not saying it's not possible, but mm -hmm. of course, it's, it's good to trust somebody and let a person know that, okay, he trusted me and I failed him yeah. down mm -hmm. to have doubts about the person. So for mm -hmm. me, I had a lot of things, but I just want, I knew what I wanted to do, and I've not regretted it since. Well, what's the kind of background that you come from? Right. I mean, all I know about you know you is yeah. you're hardworking, sure. you're very polite, and all sure. that. Your big sister, who yeah. is a chief, yeah. you know, yes, yeah, she's a female, but yeah. she's a chief in a Dumasa. That's Dompia. Yeah, Nana Dompia. Nana Dompia. Yeah. Yeah. I know her to be also very kind. That's what the very, I mean, that's all I, I heard. If you ask me about yeah. it, I was like, she's very kind and very giving. Sure. But what kind of upbringing did you get? Well, um, I think, it's, you know, it amazes me sometimes because our father was a military person, you know, but uh, he never stayed in the barracks. So we never got the barracks experience as some people mm. had, you know. So uh, we grew up in Accra, Salam down to be precise. and. My father, even though he was a military person, didn't have that kind of strict, you know, uh, rules. Uh, give give us that kind of strict rules. You know, mm -hmm. he allowed us to be able to experiment as to whatever we wanted to do. But just like Jerry was saying about his father, he was very keen about giving us the best of education. You know, and so once you are able to follow through to the level that he feels you are okay, good to go, then you know you have his blessing. And so for me, I think that also helped us to be able to become the kind of person that we've become. You know, mm. So it was OK. It wasn't the tight kind of parent. But what did you study? Yeah. Did you... All right. So I did entrepreneurship. I did a lot of uh, a couple of certificate courses uh, at Kempa. OK. Yeah. You did entrepreneurship? Yeah, entrepreneurship. So how did you end up working at the ministry for? Yeah, for a while. Eh? OK. okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyway, probably that's another time. <laughs> we we'll share that story. <laughs> But you know, after just after secondary school, I think I've had the privilege of working with Comsys Ghana Limited. I don't know if you've heard of Comsys. Yeah. They are in, you know, this yeah. network, you yeah. know, service yeah. providers. This, and, yeah. yeah. So I've had the privilege to work with them. Then just after that, you know, I decided to pursue some courses at Kimpa. I had the opportunity to work at the ministry, mm -hmm. uh, Ghana Road Fund to be specific, okay. under the Ministry of Roads and Highways. Okay. You know, so whilst there, there's that, you know, I still had that passion to be able to be on my own. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I wanted to leave, I discussed with my uh, bosses and they were like, you know, you've always had this passion for business and we would have wished you wait because the pay was good, the structure was okay. But I told them, listen, this is what I wanted to do. So at a point, before I would leave, I was still running Mantra Man alongside. Right, yeah. You know, I, had, I was lucky to have a very good boss who will give you your responsibility for the day. So once you are able to meet it, you know, I made good use of the yeah. time. You know, so I was mm -hmm. running. So at a point, I told them that this is it. I wanted to 
live and then be able to focus and grow my business. Yeah. So, but when you left to yeah. work on your yeah. own, at a point, yeah. um, disaster struck. Sure. And um, this is a concern between me yeah. and Dompia. Sure. So we thought yeah. like, you know, you yeah. were crazy to have left Adita because yeah. you were doing okay where you yeah. were sure. working. And that's what yeah, that was we okay. felt yeah. that you were doing okay yeah. working under somebody. Yeah. And then you decided to work on sure. your own. But somehow, yeah. you managed to pull yourself together. Yes. And came yeah. out of it. Of course. I mean... You know, in, in life, you, you'll be met with challenges, but, the, you know, your focus or whatever the vision is should be able to help you to overcome those challenges and, and make the mark you want to mark. Because personally, um, I feel that uh, there's no great person you mention in Ghana today that didn't go through, you know, a particular challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, challenges are normal, mm -hmm. but it's up to you to be able to face them and then come out of it so that you can also be an, an example or right. an inspiration to somebody who looks right. up to you. Yeah. So it's been tough, yeah, it was tough at a point, but I was able to mm -hmm. overcome right. because I was determined to make determined it. Determined yeah. to the determination exactly. makes yeah. that difference. <laughs> Let me take another break. I was reading um, after, I think, one of the young ladies, um, interviewed President Kufour quite recently, and I read somebody's voice and said, listen, from what President Kufour talked about, you know, he was born into money, everything, school abroad and everything, but even he failed at a point by losing elections. So failure is part of life. It's all about how you put yourself together, pull yourself up, be determined, and forge ahead. Well, let me take another, when I come back, they have at least two things in common that I know and um, we'll find out uh, the rest and what they intend to do and um, what they think about the standpoint 13 years on. Well, thank you to GTP, still timeless. GTP is on the Oga campaign, original, genuine, and authentic GTP fabric. That is what you have to buy, not the fake one. You go to social media, you see GTP, what house, GTP, whatever it is. Please, GTP's account on Facebook is GTP Fashion or GTP. Make sure you don't go and buy fake cloth. Buy GTP. It's original. It's timeless. Different designs all the time. Birthday, whatever the occasion, just make sure you add a GTP to it. I've worn GTP for like forever. And now they have the Adipadumas. We have the Addition Stroma. We have the New Style. We have the Stroma. We have the Safwa. We have, I mean, so many, you know, types and designs and colors. And you cannot, if you look at my dress, you see, this is Adipadumas. This one is Adipa. This one it's a new style. And then, let me see. Okay, I have the three. Yes, so this is Adipa Dumas. This is Adipa. This is new style. Yeah, three different all together. <laughs> we take a break when we come back. We'll continue. But hey, let me also say thank you to Esron Balloons and Accessories. Everything Balloons and Accessories. Just get in touch with them and they will sort you out. They are at Mokola, uh, adjacent to the Rollins Park. And then they have another branch at um, Flowerpot area near the Assemblies of God Church, you know, clo quite close to the Palace and Mall. And this program is aired on five platforms. Yes, five platforms. It's on Joy Prime, it's on EBN TV, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, and it's on our website as well. Five. So if you miss anything, just make sure that you go and have a review. Follow us on all our social media platforms. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be back.
still the standpoint. Again, we say thank you to our supporters. Go got to your God, Awake Purified Mineral Water and Puma Drinks by Casa Preco Company Limited. Yep, cleaning services, House of Food, Auntie Vera. Thank you so much. Auntie Vera, I hope today you brought me watching. Thank you to Cake Technique and Kodam's Gift and Stationery. Everything gives and says you just get in touch with them. They will sort you out. Thank you so much, Go God, you God. And of course, um, Juice Time. And um, who else? Note Cosmetics and Dream Oval. Our website, www.thestandpoint.com.gh, is powered by Dream Oval. Now, Terry was wondering what I know you three have in common. I know all three of you love Pastor Mensa Otabel. Sure. Or you go to ICGC. 100%. Thank you. The second one is that you are all mentors yes. and motivational speakers. Sure. Third one that I got to, I, it came back to mind when my director came to do co concert is that you all have written books. Sure. You're all authors. Sure. I like. Sure. <laughs> Very true. Okay. So, what is the bigger picture for you? What made you, of course, you, you talked a bit about um, why you decided to be a motivational, and you became a professional motivational speaker for one and a half years before you even added the business. What was the goal? Was it that people are doing so you also wanted to do some? I believe that God creates everybody for a purpose, mm. for an assignment, and that there's something that God wants all of us to become. And I'm so sure in my mind that God did not call me to be an employee. Mm -hmm. I'm so sure that if I had chosen to work for somebody, God would have been disappointed. It wouldn't have been what he had meant for me to do. Why is this important? Because it's imperative that certain people take up certain responsibilities so that they can create opportunities for others. So even at this level, I run, give or take three businesses. I employ about 15 people. That's 15 now. Mm -hmm. But in 10 years, it could double by 100%. Mm -hmm. It could double by even 1,000%. Mm -hmm. There could be 150 people could have businesses in, in other countries. So for me, all my endeavors in life is trying to become that which God made me to be. Sure. And it's not something I see only on a public platform. It's almost something that's always on my mind. What does God want me to be? So I'm very passionate about national development, mm -hmm. but I'm not clear in my mind that among the things God wants me to be, politics is included. I will only do something if I'm sure that's what God wants me to do. So for me, everything that I've done in my life, my endeavors to speak, writing a book, starting a business, is all in an attempt to become mm -hmm. what God has ordained me to become. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in doing that, I can create opportunities for people, I can make a mark, and I can inspire others. Because from my background, not if, if, if you look at the age at which I emerged in the public space, it's very easy for you to assume that, oh, or that I'd be, mm -hmm. if you yeah, sure. there were examples. Mm -hmm. But really, there weren't any examples. There, was, there wasn't any resources. Today, my siblings look at me and, and, and I ask my sister, I didn't tell them why you're so aggressive, why are you guys so ambitious? Mm -hmm. And they say, but Brad Jerry, we, we see you, we see mm -hmm. how you started. And it's so obvious that in life you become serious, things work out well. Yeah, sure. yeah. So I want to be that inspiration to someone that I know that I've arrived. I'm also a beggar, but I'm just showing you how to find bread. That in life you can make progress if you put in a lot of effort. So that's all I'm seeking to achieve. Mm. Become who God made me to be and for my life to inspire somebody to do mm. well. Mm. Terry, sure. what about you? What, what is that mm. one thing that you know that... Charlie, think, like Paul. Yeah, I think, I think sometimes I, I'm generally very optimistic. Mm. So when I, I set a goal, when I want to do something, I, I, don't, I know that I'm going to achieve it. So this sense of optimism sometimes makes it difficult for me to see loopholes that I must deal with. Mm. So sometimes there will be something that may not be going well and it takes a while before I notice, because I was, so, I was so optimistic that this is going to work. This is what I'm doing. This is the objective. I'm not making room for I don't like any negativity. I'm very intolerant of negativity okay. and all that. So sometimes you 
So you push and push and push and you realize that, ah, you should have done this, you should have done that. So this sense of optimism makes it difficult sometimes to see some of the loopholes mm -hmm. that I need to work on. So it sort of slows me down. Mm -hmm. And then maybe sometimes too, I like to think in detail and plan in detail. Mm -hmm. So that also sometimes becomes... Do people tell you that you are too serious? Ah, those, who, too serious. those oh, who don't know, like those who don't know me, say I'm too serious. There's kinds of things sometimes we talk about and all that. But well, they say I'm too serious, but I, I'm surprised they say that because I know that I, I'm, so not, not, I'm not. Jeremiah, what about you? What is your your weakest link to people? In terms of you, not, not somebody in your hmm. life or something in your life. We, weakest, I think that for what I do, the thing that becomes a strength also ends up becoming a weakness. It's ambition. There's so much that you want to accomplish. So sometimes you don't allow certain things that you have started to consolidate. Mm -hmm. Then you start new things. I think that generally for a lot of leaders, natural leaders, that's a challenge you are trying to deal with. You are so ambitious, you are so driven that you don't, you, you don't, you are eager to do a lot of things. Now, that same ambition makes you impatient with yourself and with other people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, even with your employees or people that you are working with, you are wondering, this thing has to be done and done, or why have you not done it? And you have to do it. And sometimes somebody is, somebody is trying to engage you, and you are engaging on something that to them matters, but you are, you, you, you are thinking that this is not the right time for this. for this. So... At every point in time, you have to remind yourself that. So at the moment, one of my goals in life is not just to be good at what I do, but to be a good human being. Mm. Because, I mean, you can be a good speaker, a good entrepreneur, a good writer. But what do people, how do people really think about you? The, those who, who come in close connection with you, how do you bless them? Mm. How do you touch their lives? So for somebody who is ambitious, wants to do a lot of big things, you have to have that consciousness. That those in my immediate environment, how do I bless them? So mm. I lead prayers in my company and I pray for those who have left. Even those who left and they pain me. Mm. I still, still pray, pray for I still them. Pray for them. Yeah. I want them to do well. Yeah. But for all you know, one day they may open a door for you. Yeah. So it's a certain consciousness. And I, I don't say this to say that it's easy, it's difficult. But you have to push yourself and say that I don't just want to be good at what I, what I do. But I want to be a good a human being. Sure. Steven? Yeah. I think mine is got to do with trust. I think I over trust, mm. you know. So when the person disappoints me, I find it extremely difficult to forget about it. I don't know why, because I, I don't know. For me, I, 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 when I trust you, I trust you with my all. Mm. You know, I'm, I, I don't know how to pretend, mm. you know. And I, I, I mean, my friends are here, they will tell you. I keep telling them that me, I'm practical. When they do, I've had people think Jerry loves me so much, but we've had our bad times mm -hmm. just because sometimes he does right. something and I, I need to. Like, you, exactly. You fought with him exactly. Over me. Exactly. You know, <laughs> so I correct him if I have to because yeah. I keep telling them that when you have friends who cannot rebook you when you do wrong, they, are, they don't really, you know, have your, uh, your interest at heart. You know, so for Does me. Does he know that you correct me too? Oh, yeah. Well, that one is private, so <laughs> I, don't discuss, I don't discuss it. But for me, that is it. So when I trust people and they disappoint me, I become so hurt that it takes a very long time to be able to overcome that. So for me, that is my weakness. Yeah. And, and Mami, before you go on to say, let sure. me quickly say that. So my office premises, I named it after Stevens. So yeah, sure. my oh, businesses oh, yeah, sure. operate from a space called the Stevens Center. Oh, wow. And it was to acknowledge him for all the support. Oh, amazing. All the encouragement. <laughs> Wow. All the all the amazing <laughs> things that uh, wow. he he he's, yeah. he's done for me and and it's been amazing. Stephen Stephen loves and he loves wholeheartedly, mm. and he pushes he pushes doors for you. He takes you to places that you never go. Says a, puts puts in a good word for you yeah. every now and then. And I thought that we are always making noise about celebrities and big brother we don't know, but the people around us who are supporting awesome. us we don't celebrate them. So I decided to honor him by. Naming our premises. Oh, well done. Him, well so. done. Steven, so you're well from the Steven Center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. A grateful heart yeah. sure. always keeps sure. receiving. Sure. You know, a sure. grateful heart. And I just want to show gratitude to you all too for what you're doing, wow. especially for younger people. It's not just um, young people, but of course... Some of us also look up to you and we get inspired. After all, you inspired me to write. Wow. So this is from Life Boy. Wow. They have the Life Boy soap 
they have the uh, hand washing and then they have the gel as well wow that's the uh, so that's much. sanitizer no Thank please so pass much. it on and then uh, terry yes. are you married no, no. Do you yet. have a girlfriend in the pipeline? <laughs> you have a girlfriend. No, Otherwise, no, I don't no comment. Mommy, don't let me start. <laughs> okay, so this is makeup from Nose Cosmetics, and then you give it to your girlfriend as well. And this one too for you, Steven. Sure. That's you from so Life much. Boy. Wow. And then makeup. I'll call Barbara before My you get home. My wife will be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't have to give an excuse that there's no soap. So I'm bad. <laughs> Um, Jeremiah, so and then much. tell Enam, uh, let me see if everything is in there. <laughs> yes, everything is in there. Uh, the lipstick and everything. All right. So I just want to celebrate to you and say, well done. You know, the standpoint is like, have you watched the standpoint before? Yeah, I have. Sure. Terry? Yeah, I have. Stephen, have you watched it before? All the time, you know. Jeremiah. Watching this was a job. Was a job. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> You had to do it. Yes, the standpoint is that. So, what what is your impression of after thirteen years of its existence? What do you think of it? Be because of the roles that we are privileged to play, we get to hear a lot of private stuff, and very often a lot of the things that are discussed in the spotlight are mm -hmm. career, business, but those are not the only things that really impact on people's lives. Sure. There are very important social issues that really, really affects people. So there are people who cannot pursue their careers or their businesses anymore because of they're having some family issue, marriage issue, relationship issue. So the presence of an intervention like standpoint, it's not just sure. it's not just an add on, it's a foundation. Mm -hmm. sure. And over the years the kind of subjects that you discuss on the show are things that are shaping uh, the various fabrics of our society right. and helping people straighten the past in their lives to understand certain things, subjects like domestic violence. One of the shows I remember, I never forgot, was uh, um, the gentleman, it wasn't Henry Howard, who was taking care of, was it his girlfriend or someone's baby? Yes, Or yes, something like yes. that. That the sisters, yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, so these are the things that we, we need to espouse, we need to encourage people to do. That it's not, it's not, don't only aspire to do well in a career, don't only aspire to do well in ministry, because there are people who are even doing ministry, who are having Terrible problems at home. Yeah. So I think the standpoint is amazing. Yeah. And uh, it must be on more platforms than the five that is already yeah. on. And more people need to watch and learn and improve their lives. Amen to sure. that. Thank you, Stevie. Yeah, for me, um, I've mentioned it to a couple of people that you are the Oprah Winfrey of Ghana. Yes, sir. honestly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, you know, you don't do it for the cameras. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, are, you really have people at heart. And for me, knowing you personally and some of the challenges you have, but you are able to carry yourself and still bless people. I'm more like your reporter too, because mm -hmm. sometimes I give you a lot of feedback, yes. you know, yes. from people who just, you know, want to tell you how much your, your episode has blessed them. And I do that all the time. Yeah. Sometimes I call yeah. you or connect you to people who just want to be able to express their gratitude. Yeah. And for me, it tells you that whatever you are doing, you, you are doing so well you know, that people are really getting the results. So for me, it's been an amazing journey, and I wish to tell you that keep on doing the good Thank work. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. So help us God. Terry. For me, I want to commend the, the entrepreneurial ingenuity mm -hmm. that you have used to shepherd this, this program. Mm -hmm. This is 13 years. Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. And that is very admirable. Only few people are able to start a show like this and it's keep so it on yeah. air for all, for mm -hmm. all these years. Yes. Getting yeah. content, managing a crew, paying for it, and, yeah. and all of that. And I think you've, you've, it shows that if you are doing very well. And I hope that it continues and sure. it even becomes better. better. We're we'll be celebrating the 50 Amen. years, right? Yes, Amen. We, we will. We will. <laughs> it's not, yes, don't do it you about do. you. Exactly. It's, exactly. it's That's what I said. about I mean, the people, about the, the people. impact it's making. Exactly. And that is what also yeah. keeps it going. It's true. Yeah. So I bought you a gift, two of my books. Okay. Very already autographed. Hey! <laughs> wow. So, mm, thank you. Me. So this is um, Terry Mante, Life Sense. Yes. I like that. Yeah. And then this is the political market of demand and supply. When God, when God lost, lost an election. An election. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I get my copy. Yeah, sure. Yes, I saw it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. 
Thank you. And God bless you. And keep doing what you're doing. Sure. Thank and you. keep motivating and encouraging. Thank you. you know, we need to change the perception people have about the youth mm. and especially young men. Yeah. God bless you. Thank God you. Bless you. Thank you so much for having us. You're welcome. You please pass the collection bowl around. Yeah. <laughs>